Charisma is derived from a Greek word meaning an ability to elicit favor in other people. It's a magnetic quality of personality that people respond to as if it were magic. Charisma is almost like a magic wand that confers power over others. But character has a very different origin. Character comes from a Greek word meaning chisel, or the mark left by a chisel. And of course, a chisel is a sharp steel tool used for making a sculpture out of a hard or difficult material like granite or marble. And a chisel is also used for stripping away waste material from an object, stripping away stuff that might get in the way in order to get down to the essential thing, the thing that really matters. You've got to chisel your character out of the raw material of yourself, just like a sculptor has to create a statue. The raw material is always there. Everything that happens to you, good or bad, is an opportunity for building your character. Let me point out another important distinction between character and charisma. You may have noticed it already. In both its definition and its derivation, character doesn't refer to other people. It doesn't refer to having power over other people or getting other people to follow you or gaining favor with other people. Character is something that you have and that you are. You could be marooned on a desert island and your character would still be important. In fact, it would likely be very important in that situation. But charisma wouldn't do you any good at all. Charisma requires the presence of others, while character is all about you. Character is the person you are after you've chiseled and chiseled and have gotten past all the unnecessary material to what's underneath. But since we're usually surrounded by other people, let me be a little more specific about how the differences between a charismatic person and a person with character can play out in the real world, particularly in leadership situations. Here are four sets of circumstances that can easily occur. First, a really charismatic person can make people believe there's pie in the sky or that the sky is going to fall tomorrow one just as easily as the other. By creating these expectations, charismatic individuals can indeed energize and inspire others, or terrify and demotivate them, until the overblown scenarios are proven false and the charisma runs out. But a person of character doesn't need to be anyone's Pied Piper and isn't comfortable in that role. Instead, he or she looks within for the true source of inspiration and energy. Second, a charismatic person can inspire devoted or even fanatical loyalty, but this can all too easily turn into an unconscious sense of dependency, and that can make matters difficult when the leader is no longer available. Like a charismatic coach, effective during the glory years, but when he leaves the organization, there is a sense of abandonment and the team may never achieve anything like its prior success. Powerful personalities often resist delegating authority, but it's an attitude of character for a leader to refrain from making himself or herself the indispensable heart and soul of an organization. Here's a third difference between character and charisma that's particularly important in a leadership situation, charismatic people have to keep pulling rabbits out of the hat. The magic of their presence has got to keep expressing itself, or people might start wondering where it went. Worse yet, they might start getting bored. One of the biggest pitfalls for a charismatic leader comes straight from his or her ability to inspire love and devotion. And this is the last point I want to make. In order to bask in the warm glow of a leader's approval, people may become reluctant to voice disagreements. There are people who become isolated because subordinates are afraid of them. But the same isolation can occur as a result of misplaced affection. 
People of character are usually well loved by everyone around them, but they make it clear that their own first love is for the truth, even if it hurts. I'd like to elaborate a bit on a comparison I made earlier about how creating your character is like an artist creating a sculpture. The essential point is this. I don't think character is something that just happens by itself. Any more than a chisel can create a work of art without the hand of an artist guiding it. In both instances, a conscious decision has been made. A conscious process of design is at work. Character is the result of hundreds and hundreds of choices you may make that gradually turn who you are at any given moment into who you want to be. If that decision-making process is not present, you'll still be somebody, you'll still be alive, but may have a personality rather than a character. And to me, that's something very different. There used to be a joke about football teams that lost every game. The coach would say, well, we built a lot of character this year, didn't we? As if character is something that you settle for when you haven't achieved what you really wanted. Or as if character is something that automatically develops in you as a result of adversity. I don't buy that. I don't think adversity by itself builds character. And I certainly don't think that success erodes it. You can build character by how you respond to what happens in your life, whether it's winning every game or losing every game, or getting rich or dealing with hard times. You build character out of certain qualities that you must create and diligently nurture within yourself, just like you would plant and water a seed or gather wood and build a campfire. You've got to look for those things in your heart and in your gut. You've got to chisel away in order to find them, just like chiseling away rock in order to create the sculpture that has previously existed only in your imagination. But the really amazing thing about character is that if you're sincerely committed to making yourself into the person you want to be, you'll not only create those qualities, you'll strengthen them and recreate them in abundance even as you're drawing on them every day of your life. Like the burning bush in the biblical book of Exodus, the bush that burned but it was not consumed by the flames, Character sustains itself and nurtures itself, even as it's being put to work and tested and challenged. I don't mean to sound hard-hearted about this, but I believe that if you reach a certain age, and if you really haven't achieved very much in your own terms, I don't think you can ascribe this to bad luck or a difficult childhood or any other external factor. I personally feel that your strength of character does come into question at that point. And let me make it clear that your definition of success may be different from the next person. I'm not implying that you need to have a fat bank account or a Rolls Royce to be successful. But if having those things is integral to your definition of success, then that's what you should be aiming for. In certain professions, one of the highest goals you can achieve is to generate income for the company and thereby fatten your own bank account. In those businesses, success is measured by money, plain and simple. So if you're in that type of profession and you haven't made money, you probably should take some steps to strengthen your character. In other words, character isn't an abstraction that exists somewhere up in the sky divorced from the real world. There may be other things you should do also, but you should certainly do some soul searching and some character development. Character is the means for transforming ideas into achievements. It's somewhat abstract in the sense that you can't lay your hand on it or point to it or weigh it on a scale. But in a very real sense, character is what allows you to get where you want to go. If you want to drive from your home to a store on the other side of town, You'll need an automobile with gas in the tank, and you'll need keys to start the car, but you'll also need to know how to drive. You'll need judgment, 
based on life experience to tell you when to step on the brakes if the light up the street changes to red. You'll need a true intention to reach your destination so that you don't keep stopping for coffee and a piece of pie every 10 minutes. You'll need to know how much time to allot to the trip so you can get home in time for whatever else you have to do. And you'll need enough maturity to call and say you're going to be late if you get stuck in a traffic jam. You can't lay your hand on any of those things and you can't measure them with a yardstick. But they're as important to reaching your destination as the car or the gas or the keys to start the engine. They are analogs of character. Let's continue this comparison for another moment or two. There are all sorts of ways to keep track of the condition of a motor vehicle. You can look at the tires to see whether they've worn out their tread. You can look at the odometer to see how long it's been since you've changed oil. And you can turn on a switch and then walk around the car to see if the headlights and the taillights are working properly. There are objective indicators of the condition of your car. Similarly, there are ways of objectively evaluating your achievements. Most people don't take advantage of them as often as they should, but they're available nonetheless. For example, you can put together a financial statement in order to determine your net worth. You can hire an appraiser in order to learn the market value of your house. You can compare where you were 10 years ago to where you are now in order to determine the degree of progress you've made in your life. As I've tried to explain, achievement depends on character in the same way that a successful drive to the grocery store depends on knowing when to apply the brakes and when to step on the gas. But how can you know if your character is in good enough shape to get you where you want to go? To continue the metaphor we've been using, there are ways of discovering whether you still know how to drive without having an accident. I believe there are ways of evaluating the strength of your character that are almost as clear as the depth of tread on a tire or the amount of gasoline in the tank of an automobile. In order to use these techniques for character evaluation, all you need is a commitment to be ruthlessly honest with yourself. At first, that kind of ruthless honesty may include a little bit of pain, but once you accept the fact that character is basic to achievement, you'll gladly pay the price. Just as the gas gauge of a car indicates full and empty, with several demarcations in between, you can learn whether your character has enough fuel to get you to your life's destination. You can learn to tell whether you're on full or empty or somewhere in between. But while a car runs on only one fuel that is indicated by a single gauge, character, in my opinion, can be evaluated by four different imaginary gauges. Here's the first one. On the right-hand side of the gauge, corresponding to the letter F for full on a gas gauge, I want you to imagine the letter R, which stands for refusal. And on the left side of that gauge, I want you to imagine the letter C, which stands for complacency. If your character is good and strong, there are certain things that you simply refuse to accept in yourself or in other people. In your work, you refuse to accept anything less than your best effort. That doesn't mean that things will always work out exactly as you hoped and intended, but that's not the point. There will always be variables you can't control, but your effort level should always be maxed out regardless. With your family, your commitment should be just as strong. You should simply refuse to compromise in any area where your family needs and welfare are concerned. And with yourself in your personal life, you should similarly refuse to accept pettiness or dishonesty or unethical behavior in any form. That's the right-hand side of the first character evaluation gauge. On the left hand is the letter C, which stands for complacency. But it also could be the letters LIS, standing for let it slide, or even WTDA for what's the difference anyway. 
Ask yourself where you stand on that scale. Do you have enough good, strong refusal to achieve what you want to achieve? If not, it's time to make a pit stop right now. The second character reading gauge has the letter D on the right, and on the left is the letter M. The D stands for decision, and the M stands for maybe. Ask yourself, are you a person who comes to a fork in the road and turns right or left? Or do you stop the car, scratch your chin, and say, well, maybe I'll go this way, and then again, maybe I'll go that way? And in the end, you go nowhere. Think about the big issues that are facing you in your life right now. It could be that you want to leave your job and start a business of your own. It could be that you want to get married. In any case, are you the kind of person who comes to a decision and puts it into action? Or are you someone who says, well, maybe, but then again, maybe not? Now imagine a gauge with a W on one side and an A on the other side. The W should be in bright red or orange, while the A should probably be a dingy green or pale yellow. That's because the W stands for want. As in, I want it now, or I want it real bad, or I want it so much I'll do whatever it takes to get it. The W means you'll go to law school for five years at night while working full time during the day because you want to be a lawyer. The W means you'll get up at four o'clock in the morning every day to work on your novel because you want to be a writer. It means you'll travel from one end of the country to the other many times in order to find a doctor who can make your child well. I know people who have done all those things because they wanted something and eventually they got it. The A stands for apathy. That's where you really don't care what happens. And if you really don't care what happens, it's just as well because it certainly isn't going to be anything good. Now we come to the last of our imaginary character gauges. On the right-hand side is the letter P, and that stands for promise. And on the left-hand side is a letter F, and that stands for fear. If you are a person of strong character, you will promise yourself that you will achieve your goals or... Or what? It doesn't matter, because you never consider that possibility. You have made a promise, and you're going to keep it. When you set out to drive to the grocery store, you don't stop at the doorway and think, what will I do if I don't make it? You simply intend to get to the grocery store. You know you're going to get there. You will get there. It's simply assumed. Fear is simply the inability to make a promise to yourself. It kicks in when you start thinking about all the bad things that can happen to you on the way to your destination. And before long, you're thinking, wouldn't it be easier just to stay home? Isn't it safer to just stay in bed? Isn't it better to pull the covers up over my head? In this discussion, we've been using the metaphor of going across town in a car let me conclude by referring to another little excursion, and it's one that I know for a fact you have already taken. When you were learning how to walk, you made a silent promise to yourself that you were going to do it. It may have been scary at times. You surely stumbled again and again. Tears surely fell from your eyes, but no matter. You didn't even think about that. Each time you fell, you forgot about it as soon as you regained your feet because you had promised yourself you were going to walk across the room, and you did it. How long did it take? Who cares? You did it. And that point in your life, you had the strength of character to overcome fear and keep the promise you'd made to yourself. Do you still have that strength? Whether you realize it or not, you do. When you were that little child we've been talking about, you asked yourself, how long am I going to work to realize my dream of walking across the room? And you instinctively answered, as long as it takes. Make that same promise to yourself right now. Making it takes strength of character. And as I've tried to show, strength of character is the foundation 
of achievement. 